It is very strange. Romans 7 verse 15 For what I am doing, I do not understand. For what I will to do, that I do not practice. But what I hate, that I do. Romans 7 verse 19 For I do not do the good I want to do. Instead, I keep on doing the evil I do not want to do. Galatians 5 verse 17 For the flesh craves what is contrary to the spirit, and the spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are opposite to each other, so that you do not do what you want. What a maze of spiritual juxtaposition! In simplicity, the outcome of the battle of the flesh and spirit. The issue purely rests on the one dominating the other. For that which I do, rather work or perform or accomplish, I know not. Rather than I allow not, this being the proper thing though, the idea may be that when under the delusion of sin, I do wrong. I do not know what I am accomplishing, for not what I would that I do, but what I hate that I do. But if what I would not that I do, I consent unto the law that it is good. Now then, but it is no more I that work as before it, but sin that dwelleth in me. For I know that in me, that is, in my flesh, dwelleth not good, for to will is present with me, but to perform that which is good is not reading. For the good that I would do not, but the evil which I would not, that I practice. But if I would not, that I do, it is no longer I it, but sin that dwelleth in me. I find then the law that to me who would do good, evil is present. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. For the believer, you and I, the word of God is the prescription for holy spiritual living. But regardless of giving our lives to Christ, we sin. Why? Why? This is the reason, Galatians 5 verse 17, for the flesh craves what is contrary to the spirit, and the spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are opposed to each other, so that you do not do what you want. The error to avoid is merely serving our flesh by doing whatever feels good to us. But how can we live this way if it does not come naturally to us? Galatians 4 verse 6 because you are now part of God's family, he sent the Spirit of his Son into our hearts. And the Spirit calls out, Abba, Father. The Bible urges us to walk in the power of God's Spirit. His Holy Spirit lives in the heart of every Christian. When we walk by his power, we won't indulge our own desires at the cost of others. Conflict that goes on in the heart and mind of every Christian, our flesh wants one thing, and God's Spirit wants something very different. Human beings want to feel good, to be honored, and to possess what looks good to us. All of these, coming from our human nature, are tainted by our selfishness and pride. John identified these things as worldliness. The source of this strange conflict is announced in 1 John 2 verse 15. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is passing away, and the lust of it, 
but he who does the will of God abides forever. When the Spirit comes to live in our hearts, a battle sometimes rages. However, Scripture will show that those who are in Christ can win that battle by allowing the Spirit to lead us. That power allows us to love in ways we never would have under the law. Matthew 5 verse 6 Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Romans 13 verse 14 Instead, clothe yourselves with the Lord Jesus Christ, and make no provision for the desires of the flesh. 1 Peter 2 verse 11 Beloved, I urge you, as foreigners and exiles, to abstain from desires of the flesh, which war against your soul. You and I must fight the flesh by the power of the Holy Spirit described in the following scriptures. Romans 8 verse 9 to 11 But you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If indeed the Spirit of God dwells in you. Now if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he is not his. And if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his Spirit who dwells in you. The power of sin and death has been eclipsed by the power of the Spirit. The Spirit breathes life into our mortal sin-infested bodies thanks to what Jesus has done for us. By sending his Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, God judges sin finally and completely. The sins of the world are concentrated and condemned in the flesh of Jesus as he hangs on the cross. So now there is no condemnation remaining for those who have entered into the life, death and resurrection of Jesus. God's word clearly shows that if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, then he most certainly is going to give life to your mortal bodies. God promises clearly and unmistakably that if His Spirit has taken up residence in your heart, then, even though your body dies, He will raise it from the dead like He did the body of Jesus. This is the promise that God has given to His Church that he told the disciples that you should not go anywhere until you are endured with this power. John 14 verse 15 to 17 If you love me, obey the commandments I have given you. I will ask the Father to send you another helper, the Spirit of Truth, who will remain constantly with you. The world does not recognize the Spirit of Truth, because it does not know the Spirit and is unable to receive Him. But you do know the Spirit, because He lives with you and He will dwell in you. God became flesh and lived among humanity, not just to have a transaction with people and ultimately die, but to continue to be with them and to send His Spirit to be present within believers. So, God calls His Spirit indwelled people to something greater, something more significant. They are here as redeeming forces on this earth. Their time here is about reclaiming the things He has created. Believing God has created the entire world and that it is restored in Jesus, the believer's work here through the Spirit is to say, this belongs to God and to help point out the beauty of creation to everyone, and most of all to live in it themselves by the power of the Holy Spirit who plants the teachings of the Lord in their hearts. 
Romans 7 verse 15 For what I am doing I do not understand. For what I will to do, that I do not practice. But what I hate, that I do. The Holy Spirit of God is the answer. Does the Spirit of God live in you? He is your victory over sin, over fornication, adultery, and over your area of bondage. God bless you.